In this demonstration, we're going to look at the idea of release scheduling and managing schedule conflicts. You'll notice that we've got a number of releases here that we're building, some of which are actually ready to execute when the time is right for that. Now let me just show you a little bit about this. We've got a couple of releases planned here, one for the financial services application. And in fact, the financial services is not a single application. There's actually three different apps that make up the financial services system. And so this is a, a somewhat more complicated uh, release situation that we're trying to execute there. Simultaneously with that, I know that I'm going to have some maintenance releases for the financial services system. And I want to plan as many of those out as I can, you know, as I can see into the future. And because we have a certain release cadence for how we're trying to get these applications updated and so forth, then I can be very predictive about that once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever it happens to be, and plan those releases out. And the beauty of CA Release Automation Continuous Delivery Edition is that I can take, for example, I know that I'm going to have a maintenance release here, and I'm going to do more or less the same thing each time from a workflow point of view. I can build it one time and then replicate it as many times as I need to, just putting it on the schedule where it is supposed to execute, and I can be predictive about that. Let's take a look at the what we've done here in that regard with the financial services system here. As I said, the financial services system is actually made up of three different applications. We have a core financial services application, a reporting application, and because this is financial services, we have an ATM related application. And for each one of these, I, I can tell it what is the version number that we're deploying, what user stories and defects are being addressed for that application, I should say, in this release. And uh, so a lot of additional information can go into this. Then we can set up as many phases as we need to. And what we tend to do is set up phases based on the environments that the changes are being deployed into. So for example, the first one here represents deploying these these applications into a development environment. The second one is related to pushing it into a UAT environment and finally into a production environment. And what we have in each of these is deployment task. Here's deploy financial services, deploy FSATM, deploy FS reporting. And then in this particular case, we've got some additional manual task to validate that the deployments happened as we expected, everything is good, it's time to go on to the next thing. Now you'll notice that right now I have these set up, the first one to be executed manually, and the others that once that's done to go automatically. In fact though that may not be exactly how I want it to be. I may end up changing this to be related to specific dates. Now, before I commit to a specific date, what I can do is I can look at my calendar to see when that works for me the best. Let me go back to my release page for a moment and review the fact that I also have already created a maintenance release as well. Somewhat more simple in this particular case, but still the idea of a maintenance release. And so... In this particular case, what we are simulating is the idea of an initial release, a full release, and then follow-up maintenance releases to come behind that. All right? Now, that's fine, but you'll notice something that I, I want to show us here initially, and that is the fact that we have this red symbol at the top of this phase column here, and that's telling me that I have a scheduling problem a scheduling problem. Let's look at the calendar because the calendar gives us a bit more information about this. You'll notice that here is my financial services release that I've already built, got out there. Here is my FS maintenance release that's planned. But you'll notice both of them 
have red flags here on those bars. So that's telling me that there's some kind of a scheduling conflict. Okay. Now you can imagine that financial services and, fi and financial services maintenance release, they're deploying into the same environments. And because they're here overlapping, that may very well be a problem. That's one of the beauties of the solution is that it will highlight when you're trying to use the same environments across multiple releases simultaneously. It won't prevent you from doing it, but at least will red flag that for you so that you could avoid those kind of conflicts. Let's expand these and have a look. So we know that the financial services release had three different phases and the maintenance release just had the one phase. But this, we can now see a little bit better picture of this. And I can see that here is my UAT deployment and it's telling me that I have a, a problem. Now here's the problem. You'll notice that if I drag this a bit forward a bit in time, this gray bar here is showing up. Now what this gray bar here represents is what's called a maintenance window. Let's go have a look. The maintenance windows give you the ability to say when a particular environment is available for deployment or release uh, activity. All right. We, we don't necessarily want to just say, you, well, you can deploy anytime, anywhere, if that's not appropriate. Okay. So if it's appropriate that we schedule these things, this gives us the ability to say when that time is. And so I've set up my initial rollout window to be on certain dates, March the 4th through the 6th. And I've set up a maintenance release window for exactly the same environments here, March the 11th through the 13th, which is one week later, right? So that's the gray bars that we were seeing show up in our calendar. Let's go back to the calendar now and look at that one more time. And we can see, yep, that's the problem, is that I don't actually have this release set up to execute during a maintenance window. And so that's what it's grimacing about here. And so what I can do is I need to change when this is going to be. The beauty of the calendar view is that you can do this right here. So let's go ahead and take this dev deployment and move it within the window. Now, the dev isn't quite so critical. Remember, I didn't, I, I didn't actually add the dev uh, environment to my window. So it's not a problem whether I did it now or later. But this other one is. So let's move this one inside that maintenance window. And you'll see the red flag went away for that particular phase. Now you'll notice here that obviously this one is still outside of that phase, but, but actually being outside that maintenance window is not its only problem. The other problem that we have is that right now it is looking like it's going to execute concurrently with the maintenance release. And so it has not so much a scheduling conflict of time as a scheduling conflict of resources. All right. And we'll see that if we look at this one, it has that problem. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and reposition this one to fall within within that maintenance window. And you can see that the scheduling conflict is now gone. So it's not concurrent with anything else. Plus it fits within the maintenance window. All right. Now my maintenance release had the same problem. It, it now is it's not conflicting with another release, but it is not in the maintenance window. Now I could put it within either of those maintenance windows, it doesn't really care which one, but logically speaking, it needs to go in that second one. And now, no more scheduling conflicts. Everything is sorted out. Now that I've got it more or less planned the way that I want it, I still would need to go back and tell it to change those approval gates to be schedule-based so that it will fire off at the right time, 